five-year-old Kate White is determined. She's about to head out on Lake Davis, and her grandpa has promised to help her catch her very first fish. She hasn't caught a fish yet, so it'll be good to get her out here and see her face and get a picture of it. Today, the odds of catching a trout are pretty good for Caton and the dozens of others who are casting their lines. But that wasn't always the case. Trouble began for Lake Davis in the early 90s with the discovery of a fish that wasn't supposed to be there. An angler caught a northern pike, an extremely aggressive predator that devours its competition. In this case, Lake Davis's prized trophy trout. Officials determined the pike had been illegally planted in the lake. That would begin a 14-year saga that would create a bitter feud between the community and the Department of Fish and Game, as well as cripple the local economy. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Good. How's the fishing doing? Good. Sarah Benzinger's store is just steps from the lake. She's often the resident expert on what's biting and what's not. You're familiar with the lake or you're not? Not really, no. I'll do you a little map, show you where to launch, show you where the fish are, tell you all the secrets I tell everybody. When Benziger bought the Grizzly Store and Resort in 1999, it was no secret the Northern Pike had invaded the lake. The nearby community of Portola had been extremely vocal in its protest over the state's efforts to poison the lake. In 1997, they did a chemical treatment to eliminate pike that had been found here in about 1994. Uh, and a pike reappeared about 18 months later in 1999. And we've been working with the community ever since to get to this point. Well, this is our drinking water supply. Um, from what I understand, that it, that was a uh, cancer-causing agent. And that's what concerned me. Um, married and my wife and my three kids were living up here. And I was very concerned about the chemical problems. So a lot of people may not realize it wasn't just the lake that was affected by the pike eradication, it was the forest as well. Yes, it was. From the Plumas National Forest side, we put in a forest closure for public health and safety to help protect the tributaries and all where we were going to have workers. That way we prevented an accidental contact with the public with the chemicals and it also allowed us for a smoother operation. But the protest and the poisoning went on. For two years, residents waited. The pike came back, but the people didn't. They did the original eradication of pike in uh, 1997, and then 10 days after I purchased the store and closed escrow, they rediscovered pike. Well, as a business owner, I was completely against the, the treatment of the lake. It was an economic disaster for our business. Uh, we lost a lot of, lot of customer and a lot of revenue. But the pike weren't just threatening this northern Sierra Lake. There was an even bigger problem. Officials feared the pike might escape Lake Davis and travel downstream to the Sacramento and American rivers, and then possibly into the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta. It was a scenario that could have caused an ecological and economical disaster for the state. If, if the state thinks it has problems with the salmon spawn now, they, you can't even imagine what the pike could do. Pike are, they're aggressive fish, they'll take over a body of water. It's the same with a lot of other invasive species, but this one was a particular problem right here in this location and its potential downstream impacts. And you know, the economy up here was really suffering, as well as the environment and the wildlife and the fisheries. If the pike had made it downstream, it could have taken a huge bite out of California's commercial fishing industry by threatening the already fragile delta. Remember, there are no known predators for the pike in California, and this fish eats everything. That's what led the Department of Fish and Game to go for a second round of eradication treatments in 2007. Last time it was very controversial and confrontational up here, uh, and this time the businesses welcomed us with open arms and uh, you know, invited us into their community. Finally, after removing nearly 65,000 pike from this precious water source, Lake Davis has a clean bill of health. We're looking at the lake water. We have trap nets out there, and we've had 170 days approximately of net time in there, and we found no pike. More than a dozen years after the pike were first discovered, the predator appears to be gone, and the community is celebrating. Uh, what a beautiful day. Uh, lake Davis is back. It's uh, once again back as one of the premier destinations, certainly in California. 
Fish and Game plans to restock Lake Davis with more than 1 million rainbow trout. These aren't just any old fish, though. They come from Eagle Lake, which means they're hardier and they're faster growing, which also means they have a greater chance of survival. So how do you guys feel about that? Feel nice. good. <laughs> it's fun. Back at the Grizzly store, Bensinger has her own set of goals. Now that the fishermen are back, she's ready to reel in her own dreams. I would like to see the lake become so popular that we would be able to stay open maybe two or three extra months or maybe all year round. That would be great. The community and the federal agencies all worked hand in hand to make this happen and it worked out right this time. It was beautiful. Brand new beginning. <laughs> We're excited about it. We are. Totally psyched. Very psyched. Fish on. And what about Lake Davis's newest fishing fan? Yep, Katie White has caught her very first fish. Her grandpa has the picture to prove it.